Your greatness will outlast your downfall. Remember who you are, not what they told you. Subscribe to my channel at the link you see across the screen, like and don't forget to hit the bell for more content. Follow me on all platforms at the link across the screen. All right, let's go on to our next call. Our whiz contact number, Judson 26405. This is Stan Bernard Contact. You're on the air. Hello. Yes. Uh, Malcolm, I'd like to ask you whether you feel that uh, the uh, uh, recent action of the Gaulist government in refusing your entry into France is in any way inconsistent with France's general policy towards uh, the Afro-Asian community and Africa in particular. Yes, I uh, dispatched a wire to Dean Rusk, the Secretary of State here today, uh, demanding an investigation into the reason why the French government uh, could ban an American citizen and no uh, uh, reaction come from the American embassy whatsoever. But I might point out, I was in Paris last uh, November and was successful in organizing uh, a good organization, which another one that uh, Dr. Hall over here can investigate in his capacity, uh, in the American Negro community in Paris, and they have been working in conjunction with the African community, and it was the African community and the Afro-American community in Paris that invited me there to address a mass rally, and the French government permitted my entry into that country. And I might point out that it was the communist trade union workers in Paris that re refused to let them have the hall initially, blocked their attempt to get the second hall, and eventually exercised influence in the French government to stop it. But the Communist Trade unions work, Union workers, one of the largest unions in that country. And, uh, and the reason I was in London, I had been invited there to attend the first con Congress that had been given by the Council of African Organizations, who, were in who, invi who had a four-day Congress, invited me to make the closing address because they were interested in the struggle of the black man in this country in his quest for human dignity and human rights. Okay, we're going to move on to our next call. This is Contact. You're on the air. Hello? Yes. Uh, may I speak to Malcolm X, please? Yes, go right ahead. Uh, I would like to, uh, I don't have a question for Malcolm X. I would like to tell him that I am 100% with him uh, for whatever he goes along with uh, to helping the Negroes. And uh, I think it's an awful shame that uh, anyone should uh, bum or throw a bum into a, a house uh, where there is human beings, particularly children. And uh, I don't go along at all with the uh, Muslim, um, so-called Muslims at all, because to me they're only teaching hate. Well, I confess that I was one of the leaders in, in projecting the Muslim movement and, and uh, causing so many people to believe in the, in the distorted version of Islam that is taught there. But at the same time, I have to point out that there are some progressive elements, right-meaning persons in the black Muslim movement. Uh, all of them do, are, are not wrong. There are many in there who mean well, but are just being misled by the hierarchy, many of which do not mean well. But there are, is a, a large progressive element within the movement, and usually they are the ones who come in, they stay a year, and they, and they get disillusioned, and they go back out. But I was responsible for giving the people the impression that the black Muslim movement was more than what it is, and I take that responsibility. You can put the complete blame upon me. But at the same time that I take that responsibility, I want to point out that no white man or white group or agency can use me against Elijah Muhammad or against the black Muslim movement. When you hear me open up my mouth against another black man, cannot, no white man can put words in my mouth, nor no white man can sick me on another black group. When I have analyzed the man and the group with my own understanding and feel that it is detrimental to the interests of the black community, then I'm going to attack it uh, with that same intensity. Gordon, you were going to well, say Well, again, as you know, it's more words, and uh, he began by saying that uh, he has to confess that he was responsible for misleading so many people on the Muslim count. There were never very many Muslims. Let's always come back to the fact that not very many people were ever misled. The white press was misled into believing Dr. there were a lot of Muslims. Dr. Hall. There were never more than 15,000 Muslims Dr. in America, Hall. and there, were, there are only now 6,000, and we have 22 million Negroes in the United States. Keep Dr. these facts Dr. Hall. uppermost in one spot. You, you admitted this at the very beginning, Malcolm. Here, here, you said here, the 15,000 figure here, is here, correct. Here's another fact. These are facts, Malcolm. Here's another fact you have to keep in mind. There never were many Mau Mau. 
There never were. There were always more Kikuyu, more Kenyans than Mao Mao. What is this supposed to prove? Well, it was the Mao Mao who brought independence to Kenya. Yes, but and the man who was uh, regarded as an extremist and a monster just five years ago, Jomo Kenyatta, mm -hmm. is the president of, of uh, the Republic of Kenya today. And it is this same man who five the years ago... The situation in please, colonial uh, Africa is not like it is in the United well, States. Well, this is colonial. Anytime you have a system in 1965 that will take children and let them be marched down the road by not... Yeah, but uh, in, elements, in numbers, in numbers but, you, have to, you have to draw one big analogy. In the United States, the Negro is still the minority in the United States. And, and when you're talking about minorities within minorities within minorities, well, you start boiling uh, it all down, uh, you I can't say, really draw that analogy of a colony. This. I say this, that the Mau Mau was, was also a minority, a microscopic minority, but it was the Mau Mau who not only brought independence to Kenya, within but it, a vast Negro majority. But it brought, brought but it's still, that, that uh, wick, the powder keg is always larger than the wick. The smallest thing in the powder keg is the wick. You can touch the powder all day long and nothing happens. It's the wick that you touch that sets the powder off. I think it will blow up. It's the wick <laughs> that you touch that sets the powder off. And if Gordon. you go here in Holland and you take all these moderate uh, Negroes that uh, Dr. Hall here puts the stamp of approval on and regards them as responsible, they don't explode. It's the wick. It's that small element that you refer to as nationalists and other... You're doing uh, all you can to encourage it now. Not encourage it. Whether you're in front of it or in No, no. I don't, yes, I, do. I'm not, I don't encourage it, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it doesn't exist. I'll don't you, you, don't you incite, Malcolm? Don't I don't you think incite? so. I don't think. How are you going to incite people who are living in slums and ghetto? It's the city structure that incites. A city that continues to let people live in rat nest dens in Harlem and pay higher rent in Harlem than they pay downtown. This is what incites it. Uh, who lets merchants outcharge or overcharge people for, for their groceries and their clothing and other commodities in Harlem while you pay lesser for it downtown. This is what incites it. Well, a, a city that will not create some kind of employment for people who are barred from having jobs just because their skin is black. That's what incites it. Don't ever uh, accuse a black man for voicing his resentment and dissatisfaction over the criminal condition of his people as being responsible for inciting a situation. You have to indict the society that allows these things to exist. And this is where I differ with Dr. Hall. Well, in the well, we differ in many places now. This is not one of the many places, Dr. Hall, where we differ. Well, in a sense, didn't Hitler also talk about different points of view? Didn't he say that conditions existed? And didn't he also incite people? Well, I, I'm not, I don't know anything about Hitler. You know? I, I wasn't in Germany. No, I'm in I'm America. Not, don't, don't, don't please. I say I no, wasn't in. I say I don't know anything about Hitler. I wasn't in Germany, but I have. You know Hitler. about Hitler. Well, though. you can't point to Hitler in Germany behind what's going on here in America. Turn on the television tonight and see what you they're don't, doing. You don't no, 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 no. Parallel. Turn on the television tonight and see what they're doing with Dr. King. Mm -hmm. Turn on. No, this yeah, is Dr. King's methods are not still, your methods. Still, Dr. King goes you, along. you couldn't do in Alabama Dr. what he is doing, sir. You could not sir, do in Alabama. You gotta pray that I don't go and try and do what he's doing. Anytime Dr. King, oh, these are, these are just, these are any, any time Dr. King goes along with people like you, like you, mm -hmm. you should put forth more effort to keep him out of jail. You should put forth more e effort to protect him. Then you should put forth more effort to protect the people who go along with him and display this love and this patience. If you would do more for those people and spend some of your time trying to help those people instead of trying to attack me probably this country would be a much better place in which to live. You spend too much of your time, Doctor, I really, trying to investigate. I rarely ever mention you, you Malcolm. You you're spend, hardly worth mentioning. You spend too much of your time, Doctor, uh, running around trying to uh, keep track of dissatisfied black people whom you label as extremists. Hardly. Whereas hardly. if you would spend some of your time in, the, in these places where Dr. King is fighting, then you would make this country a better place to live in. Malcolm, I lectured all over the state of Alabama mm -hmm. when you had nothing to do with the Muslims. Did you have on a white sheet? Else. Did you have on a white sheet? Gentlemen, I, uh, time. Bell. Here we go. Bell. Okay, that's round 15. We just had it. Dr. And Hall, come up to the Audubon Sunday at 2 o'clock, and we'll continue it from there. I have Gentlemen, important things to do. We have to move on. Time has run out. I'd like to thank all of you for showing up tonight. Thank you very much, Gordon. Malcolm, and of course, Aubrey Barnett.